I'm going to invite you to take a seat and grab your Bible or your Bible app and turn to the little book of 1 John. 1 John chapter 1 is where we're going to be. If you don't know where 1 John is, uh, it's way, 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 way back in the, in the back of the, the Bible. Uh, if you've got a Bible app, you don't really worry about that. You just scroll down till you find 1 John and click on it. And, and if you don't have a Bible with you and, and you're in uh, the room here at Sweetwater or in the room at Parker, then grab one of the ones available around you. In, at Sweetwater, it's, it's in the seats around you. At Parker, there's a table back in the middle. Just get up right now, go back there and grab one of those Bibles and turn to page 1,210 and you will find the little book of 1 John and be able to follow along. And as always... If you don't have a Bible and you're in one of our campuses and you want one, please take one. Just just take one. We want you to have it and take it. If you're joining us online and you don't have a Bible and you want one, message us and we will get one to you, whether we have to mail that to you or whether we can deliver it to you because you're here local. Uh, We just want everyone to have the Word of God and read the Word of God because we know if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. Hey, speaking of life change, uh, let me just tell you about something that's going on this week that everyone with a child or a grandchild in your sphere of influence may want to check out. Uh, Here at Calvary, we care about families, we care about our kids, and we want to help parents and grandparents protect their children and grandchildren. Uh, Because can we, everyone over the age of like 30, can you agree that the world that they are living in now is not the world that we grew up in? I mean, it's just radically different. And uh, we're partnering with Calvary Christian Academy. And this Tuesday night, we are going to be offering, and and whether you're in Parker or whether you're here in in Havasu, this Tuesday night at our McCulloch campus at 630, we're having an expert on teenagers and social media, children and social media, speaking to us. Her name is Katie McPherson. Uh, She's nationally known, and we're bringing her in just for this, that one evening 6.30, it'll be a couple of hours. It's appropriate for children ages eight and up, but it's appropriate for all parents and grandparents to come and learn how to better protect your kids, your grandkids, from the influences that are out there that are trying to corrupt them, that are trying to pervert them, that are trying to abuse them. And uh, and if you think, well, it can't happen because I'm a good parent, it can happen because our kids know technology better than we do. Uh, and if you're a grandparent, your grandkids know technology better than you. So uh, it, it's, it's a different world. So we're trying to equip you. We're trying to help you to uh, better protect our kids, your kids. So that's Tuesday night, 630 McCulloch Campus. Uh, there's no admission cost. Uh, just come in and come be prepared to learn, to maybe uh, realize that, uh, that uh, there's more you can do to help your kids navigate this digital world that is full of digital demons. And, uh, and so uh, we're trying to help you in that way. So I hope you'll come Tuesday night. Hey, uh, I don't know about you, but I grew up attending church. I mean, a lot. A- anybody else? Anybody else grew up going to church a lot? Okay, a lot of hands grew up. A lot of you are like, nope, didn't have that, but just bear with me. I mean, when I say a lot, I mean all the time. We went Sunday morning. We went Sunday night. We went Wednesday night. This was every week. I mean, this was not like occasionally. This is like by clockwork. We knew what day it was. We knew it was church day. We went to special events. We had revivals. We had musicals. We had trainings. I remember four different churches growing up, one in North Carolina, two in Illinois, uh, one in Arizona. And, and, and I thought back on this as I'm writing this. and went, We moved houses more than we moved churches. I mean, in those four churches, we lived in 11 different houses. I'm like, we were crazy, but we were, you know. uh, And then I served on staff of four churches in three states prior to coming and being pastor here at Calvary. So I understand church culture really well. I understand Baptist church culture extremely well. And one of the dysfunctions that I think all church groups had in common, maybe have in common, uh, was the understanding, the unwritten, unspoken understanding that all of us must hide and pretend. We got to hide and we got to pretend. Don't let anyone know your business. Don't let anybody know your failings or your sins. Not if you want to be respected. That's right. We went to church all dressed up. Anybody else have to dress up and go to church? Yeah. You know what? My mom put me in one of those little suits for kids with short pants and the bow tie. And I know all the moms, you know, like, oh, how cute. 
Hey, that's brutal when you have older brothers that go, oh, look at the sissy. Okay? Scarred me. All right? We dressed up to go to church. Hey, look, everybody did. You pretended that you were the perfect, happy family. And then you went home and lived very different lives. Right? And everyone kept secrets because if people knew how you failed, then you were judged, you were marginalized. Maybe you were even asked to leave the church. You were always gossiped about. I'm sorry, that you were on the prayer chain. So, oh, see, some of you did grow up going to church a lot. Okay. See, and I, and I remember as a child being told by my parents, instructed, because every time we moved to a new church, they'd say, okay, now remember, don't tell anyone about our stuff or our personal matters. And you know what? As a family, we didn't have any secrets. We were boring. I mean, there was nothing, they were like, no bodies buried any place, no secret addictions or affairs happening. I mean, but we were taught to hide. Everyone was hiding something. It, it felt like church was, we were all living the life in the Wizard of Oz, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. How many of you actually got that reference? The rest of you need to go home and Google it, okay? Uh, now, see, this kind of attitude, this whole hiding and pretending is a problem because it results in two things. First of all, it results in joyless, powerless Christians. That's just one of the effects of, of spending all that energy hiding from being discovered or being found out or, or letting the real you show. Because um, if you're afraid of being discovered, you can't joyfully follow Jesus. I mean, if you're afraid that people are going to get to know who you are and what's going on in your life, you're not going to be able to joyfully follow the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Just can't happen because you're spending all your energy trying to hide and, and keep the secrets and navigate what that looks like. And then the, the second problem that it produces is it damages the testimony of Jesus. The unchurched believe that the church is filled with Hypocrites. Hypocrites. And you know what? They're right. That we've, we've proven them right through the years because if you say one thing and you do another, what are you? Hypocrite. Hypocrite. So this is a problem when we spend that energy trying to hide. So Calvary's solution to this problem is to embrace the core value of transparent living. Transparent living, that God desires us to be real, open, and honest about who we are and allow others to do the same. Okay? This is one of our five core values. Uh, now, like our mission is to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. I talked about that a few weeks ago. Uh, Pastor Joe shared our first core value last week, relatable truth. We, we just mentioned that, you know, if you read and apply God's word, God will change your life. And the other three, besides transparent living, are uh, contagious celebration, uncomfortable grace, and radical service. But tonight, we're going to talk about transparent living. God really does desire us to be real, open, and honest about who we are, and He expects us to do the same to others, to allow them to be real, open, and honest. So as, as pastors, can I just tell you, we know that we are all sinners, all right? All uh, right. And when I say we know that we are all sinners, I'm talking about us as pastors. We know that we're sinners, and we know you guys are sinners too, all right? Because the Bible tells us that, right? For all of sin, it comes short of the glory of God. There is no one righteous, not even one of us. So we're, we're all sinners. We know that. Uh, and by the way, uh, we all know the ways we've personally proved the Bible right in our own lives, don't we? So let's walk in the light. First John chapter one. I know the, your notes say verse seven. I want to start back at verse five. This is the message that we have heard from him, from God, and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, with God, while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's walk 
in the light. We're told to walk in the light. But the truth is, we don't want to walk in the light. Because the light exposes our sin. You can't hide in the light, right? You got to hide in the darkness. And if you spent your whole life trying to hide so people don't see who you really are, then uh, you prefer the darkness. And Jesus even talked about that in John chapter 3. He said, the light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than the light because their works are evil. Right? What do the bugs do when you turn the light on? Right? Anybody ever live in like a roach motel kind of house? <laughs> ever been there and done that? I, I, we lived in a condo in Georgia. It was nasty. I mean, you had to keep the cereal in the fridge and all that kind of stuff. You turn the light on and the roaches boom, scatter. <laughs> And, and we have that same tendency, right? Because we don't want to be seen. We're comfortable in the darkness, but when the light comes on and exposes our deeds, we, we don't want to be seen. We are natural born children of darkness. But Jesus calls us to walk in the light. And if we walk in the light, we find freedom and joy and power. And we disarm those accusations of hypocrisy. It's powerful to walk in the light. And, and some of you think walking in the light sounds appealing. Most of us think that walking in the light sounds terrifying. I want to offer you the encouragement to walk in the light. It's this value of transparent living. That God desires us to be real, open, and honest about who we are and allow others to do the same. And if we do that... If, it revolutionizes our lives. Again, we're talking about power and joy and freedom and just defeating that accusation of hypocrisy. If we're gonna lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus, we really need to live out transparent living. But if we're gonna do that, we gotta make two choices. Two choices I'm gonna challenge you to make today. Two decisions that I believe every one of us needs to decide that we're going to live in and follow if we're going to practice transparent living. The first one is confession. Confession. Okay? Confession is at the heart of following Jesus. I mean, we just read it, right? If you confess your sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive you your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. The Apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 10, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. See, confession is being honest about who you are before God and asking him to forgive you and to save you. That, that's why confession is essential to the Christian life. We are people of confession. We admit that we need Jesus to save us. We admit that we are sinners. So if confession is so important, I just gotta ask you, have you done this? Have you admitted that you're a sinner and surrendered to Jesus as Lord of your life? So have you confessed Jesus as Lord of your life? Yes. Okay. Well, if some of you are sure that you have. If you haven't done that, can I just tell you, if you haven't done that, you're just being religious. And that's not our goal for you or anyone here at Calvary. We don't want you to just be religious because religious doesn't mean, it means that you don't have power. It doesn't mean you don't have any freedom. It, doesn't, it means you don't have any joy. So today we'd invite you to step into the light. If you've never decided to admit you're a sinner and ask Jesus to save you, would you do that right now? Would you stop being religious? Because if you're in this room or you know, you're in our worship at Parker or you're tuning in online and you think, hey, I gotta do this and, and you're just doing it to be religious would you take that step of faith and say, all right, I admit I'm a sinner and I can't save myself and I need Jesus to save me and ask him to do that? That's confession. That's where this, this life with Jesus begins. And, and we'd love for you to just make that decision right now. Now, if you make that decision right now and you're at our physical locations, then talk to us after the service. One of the pastors, our prayer team here at the front, we would love to talk with you about following Jesus. If you're joining us online, let us know. Let the online host know, email us. Uh, there's response cards online. Just, you know, tell us that, hey, I follow Jesus and I wanna talk with someone about what it means to be a follower of Christ. Now, if you are a follower of Jesus, 
If you said yes to that question, if you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins, was raised from the dead, and you've made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then you already have confessed your sins to God. But I gotta ask you this. Have you told anyone else? Have you told anyone else? See, I grew up in churches, I told you, that were hiding. Everybody was hiding. And, and everybody believed in confessing to God. Everyone believed that you got to confess your sins to Jesus, okay? Everyone talked about that. And a lot of times they would say things like, well, we don't have to confess to anyone else because we're not Catholic. <laughs> right? We don't have to go into the confessional and tell the priest the stuff that we've done. And, and that, we don't need absolution from a priest. We've got it from God. That is absolutely correct. But it's not all there is. Okay? Uh, see, they made a mistake when I was growing up because they kept telling me to read the Bible, and I did that. That's why we tell you to read the Bible. We want you to actually hear from God's Word, not just from a bunch of preachers. And the Apostle James says this. This is Jesus' brother, okay, who became a believer after Jesus was raised from the dead, became a leader in the early church, wrote the letter James in your Bible. He says, confess your sins to one another. And pray for one another so that you may be healed. Confess your sins, not just to God, but to one another and pray for one another that you can be healed. I mean, it's that simple. It is that direct. Yes, we need to ask God for forgiveness first, but we need each other in terms of, of this. Freedom is found, in, and let me just be honest, freedom is found in being honest with God, honest with yourself, and honest with others. Two out of three is not gonna cut it. Two out of three means you're partially in jail. You can say, well, I'm honest with God and I'm honest with myself, and I'm not telling anybody else, you're not gonna live free. Because you're gonna be worried about discovery. You confess to others and confess to yourself, but you don't confess to God, you're gonna go to hell when you die. Because you need his saving grace. If you confess to God and you confess to others, but you're not being honest with yourself, you haven't really confessed at all because you're just pretending. You see, there's this beauty when we confess. It, it, because when we confess, we have nothing to hide. Nothing to be ashamed of any longer. No, you know, nothing to feel guilty about. No secrets to keep. No fear of discovery robbing the joy from our lives. That's what confession does for us. It, 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 you know, look, I don't know about you guys, I hate making mistakes. Anyone else with me on that? And, I, and, and what's worse than making mistakes is admitting you made a mistake, right? Some of you, like, do all kinds of verbal Olympics to not admit that you made a mistake. You know, uh, but, you know, not, I, I hate it. But confession is better than fearing discovery. So about 10 years ago, uh, I failed financially. Okay, now, it really wasn't 10 years ago that I failed. 10 years ago, I reaped what I sowed for two decades before that. And, uh, and I failed financially, and I confessed that to the church on a weekend just like this. Four services, might have been five. No, it was four at the time. And, and, uh, and, and I hated every one of those. But you know what? I... I didn't have to worry about somebody coming up and saying, oh, I heard you failed. I heard you made a mistake. I did that. And, and so uh, I did that because I want to be honest, open, and real. Look, I know a lot about following Jesus, but I was a money moron. Okay? And, and yes, I repented. Dave Ramsey helped me do that. So uh, that's why we're such big believers in Financial Peace University. Okay? Because it'll help you learn some things and do some things that honor God and so you won't be a money moron. So here's a question. What are you afraid that people will discover about you? What are you afraid that people will discover about you? Now, just take a minute and tell your neighbor. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's like, I'm not telling them nothing. Uh, you know. No, but see, whatever popped into your head at that question, whatever 
thought you had that made your blood pressure go up and clench your fists or your teeth or whatever. Uh, look, God wants to set you free from that. And I want you to know here at Calvary, we are not afraid of your mess. We're, we're just not afraid of it. We, already, we absolutely have people who are more messed up than you ever were. And we're celebrating their redemption. That's how we know they're more messed up because they share their stories and they talk about how God has saved them and redeemed them and restored them and lifted them up to what they never thought they would ever have. We try to tell those stories on a regular basis so that you guys will know it's okay to be honest here, to be transparent here, to be real in this place, that it's a safe place, that we're not gonna judge you, throw you out, scorn you, or, or try to guilt you. We're gonna talk about how God can restore you, how he can heal you, how he can set you free and lift you up. So uh, we know God can redeem your life too because of the lives he's already redeemed. And, and that's why we, we celebrate this. Look, we know you're evil, okay? I hope you don't take offense at that. We know you're evil. The Bible says it. And, and by the way, I know it too. Not just because the Bible says it, but because uh, I'm evil. Okay, I used to call myself a scum-sucking pig sinner all the time. Okay, I know, it makes people chuckle. It's kind of a fun way of saying I'm evil. And, and here's, what I, here's how I think about this. Um, I'm evil because I know my own heart. And my heart is filled with pride and greed and envy and gluttony and laziness and anger and lust. That's why uh, the pastors on staff have covenant eyes on their devices because we know the temptations are real. We know the battles that people are facing because we're facing those too. And I know how evil my heart is. So since I know how disgustingly evil I am, here's what I assume. I assume that you are half as evil as I am. That's it, just half as evil as I am. And if you're half as evil as I am, you are really disgusting, okay? <laughs> just saying, you're, you're, you guys need help, all right? But that's why Jesus came, to help us. So confess, stop hiding. It, it, it's only going to keep you in jails. Calvary is a safe place. It's a safe place to confess, to repent, to grow, and to build a redeemed life. And that's a life that is free and joyful and powerful. And if you don't know how to start that confession, can I just encourage you to check out Celebrate Recovery Monday nights at 6.30 right in this room? See, there's some of you that have already started finding that freedom, and, and you know what I'm talking about. But celebrate recovery. It's a safe place. It's a place where everybody's open and honest and real. And, and, uh, and if you're not quite ready for that, can I encourage you to talk to a pastor or a counselor or a friend? Start that road to healing, to freedom by confessing. Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Uh, so, transparent living. If we're going to do this, it requires confession. And the second thing that it needs is community. Community. Uh, if you want to succeed in transparent living, you won't be able to do it alone. Okay? It, it, it's, you can't do it alone. You need help in this. By the way, we all need community community. We need people around us who we can be real, open, and honest with, and they can be real, open, and honest with us. Because if nobody knows you, then you're already hiding anyway. Right? We need people around us who love Jesus, who love us, and who encourage us to walk in the light so we can have fellowship with one another and celebrate the fact that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all our sin. That's what community is. That's what biblical community is all about. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20 puts it this way. It's one of my favorite Proverbs. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Hey, uh, if you love tattoos, why don't you put that one on you? <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, especially younger people, you know, just a reminder. Put it someplace you can see it all the time and go, yeah. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools, uh, you're going to crash and burn, okay? That, that's what he's saying. Now, I've heard it said, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. 
The Apostle Paul puts it this way, don't be deceived, bad company corrupts good morals. See, we want every believer at Calvary to have unchurched friends that you are influencing toward Jesus Christ. You know, since our mission is leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus, we want you to be leading your unchurched friends to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. We want you to inviting them to church. We want you to encourage them to read the Bible. We want, you know, we want you investing in their lives. We want every single person at Calvary who's a follower of Jesus to have unchurched friends. And we want every believer at Calvary connected to a life group or a ministry team. Every single one of you. Uh, so that you have people in your life that you can be real, open, and honest with. Because if you don't have that, you're not going to be real, open, and honest with anyone. You see, my life group is made up of my friends. Friends who know me and accept me. Not as Pastor Chad, but as Chad. I mean, we hang out together. We laugh together, cry together, pray and support each other. We encourage each other to live in the light. We celebrate the successes and grieve our losses. And we always love and encourage each other. And yes, we give each other a hard time, but that's in love. You see, after all, it's not transparent living if no one can see you. That's just social hiding. And can I just be honest right now, in the midst of our pandemic, it's really easy to hide. Right? to wall yourself off, to shut yourself behind closed doors, and you can have your food delivered and your medication delivered, and, and you can have Amazon deliver whatever you need. You don't ever have to see people or let people see you again. You can live your life as a recluse without real community where people know you. And yet God calls us into community so that we can have relationships that there is encouragement and there is accountability. Accountability so that we can be real, open, and honest. Accountability so that we can't just put stuff on social media that makes our life look perfect while we're dying on the inside. See, we need that community. And, and here's the thing. Not only do we need that community... But we need each other if we're going to be successful at our mission. See, we need to live authentic, transparent lives to accomplish the mission that God has given us. Look, the, the people in this room, the people at Parker, we live in communities where people know us. Okay? People know who you are. People know what church you go to. I mean, if you go to the same restaurants like I do, people know what you eat and drink. Look, I don't have to tell them I want Diet Pepsi when I walk in. They already know that. Every server in town that, you know, knows that I have a drinking problem. <laughs> and, and look, you know what else they know? They know I'm going to be kind to them even if they get the order wrong, and they know that um, I'm going to tip well. And they know that I'm the pastor of Calvary. They know stuff about you too. You think you're invisible. You are not. You, you think that, that nobody knows who you are, but you are wrong. People know that you profess Jesus, you know, because you're not slinking in and hiding in the dark right here, right now. But, but here's the thing. People know us. And, and if we're going to actually impact our communities for Jesus, then we have to practice transparent living. We have to show them who we really are and that we really do love Jesus and we really are going to treat people well so that we can lead the unchurched in our communities into a life-changing relationship with Jesus. That means that we have to be the ones who repent of hypocrisy and authentically love people, authentically show kindness so they can see the power and the joy of living in freedom. Like, we've been telling them that as church for a long time. And, and they're not buying it. Not until they see it in your lives. Not until they see it in your relationships. Not until they see it in your freedom, which means that we need to practice confession and we need to practice biblical community. And I know how uncomfortable this is because some of you are sitting here going, I don't want them to find out about my secrets. 
And, and look, in, in a room this big and two different communities that we're talking to with our online uh, campus and the people who are tuning in, there, there are people who are watching right now who are part of this right now that, that are hiding uh, addictions. I mean, whether it's to drugs or alcohol or, you know, whether it's illegal drugs or whether it's opioids or whether it's, you know, addictions to pornography or addictions to gambling, addictions to food, addictions to, you know, whatever it is. You know, there's people who are hiding addictions and you don't want people to know about your addictions. And you're pretending that you got it under control, but you're a slave to your addiction. And you're not going to get anywhere until you get honest about it and say, I need help. I did mention Celebrate Recovery Monday night at 6.30, right? Yeah. That's why it's there. And, and there's some of you whose marriages are falling apart, and you come to church, and you put a, a smile on your face, and you hold hands. the only time you touch all week long. And, and, you're, uh, and, and you're thinking, we're not going to make it, and, and yet you aren't acknowledging that you need help. You're not seeking out counseling or, or asking for someone to, to speak wisdom into your life. There's some of you that are, that are hiding affairs or, or promiscuity, and, and you think, I can manage this, I can get along with it, but your life is about to crash, and, and you need to go ahead and confess and start putting it back together. There's some of you that are, like I was, you know, 10, 12 years ago, just financially uh, about to go under, and you're desperate, and you're embarrassed, and you're afraid that people are going to find out because you actually are competent in your profession. You're just not competent in your financial management. And there's some of you that are just sitting here hiding the secret that you hate your life and you think about dying all the time. And you honestly believe the lie of Satan that the world would be a better place without you. Look, we're not afraid of your mess because God is the God who heals and restores and rebuilds and redeems, but it can't happen until we get honest. And here's the truth. You'll either choose to get honest and allow God uh, to heal you, invite God's redemption or restoration into your life, or you'll wait until life breaks you and your life is shattered into a million pieces and beg God to put it back together. He'll redeem either way. I'm just inviting you to be proactive about inviting redemption and choosing to confess first to God that you need him and you need his grace and then to one another so that we can pray for you and walk with you while you experience healing. So will you stop trying to hide? Will you stop fearing discovery? Will you step into the freedom of transparent living? We know it's life-changing. Let's pray. Father, it's amazing that you know us. You know our every thought, every word, every idea that we have. You see it, and, you, and yet, even in all of our rebellion and filth, you love us. You love us, and you want to forgive us, and you want to adopt us, and you want to call us sons and daughters, and you even want to entrust us with your ministry, the ministry of life change, the ministry of reconciliation. And God, all that truth is so amazing that's almost too much to grasp. And, and, and I simply pray that your spirit would move in this room and you would free us from fear, especially the fear of discovery. And God, this, this day or this week, that we would have the courage to begin that journey of confession, that we would seek out community and we would start being real and open and honest about who we are and allow the people around us to do the same. Because God, all of us are a mess who are loved by you and cleansed by the blood of Jesus, our Savior. So help us to walk in the light. That's our prayer. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.